I've been asked a few times recently whether I would consider making a travel art supplies video and as I'm in Suffolk now for a couple of weeks and I've brought my supplies with me I thought it would be fun to show you which ones I decided to pack and why and what I'll be using to work at my mum's kitchen table. So first up I have my tin of coloured pencils, I admit this isn't travelling light, I just decided to bring them all because I was here for two weeks. Um, if I was travelling a little bit lighter I would just have chosen a smaller colour palette of pencils. But in that tin I also have my metal brass sharpener and my magic eraser. This little plastic pouch, I think some people call them stuff bags. Um, this I've had since I was in Paris and it's great for just putting all of the smaller items in and just keeping them safe and all together while I'm travelling. This cute little ceramic palette is by Red Clover Meadow on Etsy and I brought this just to add a little bit of extra mixing space if I needed it. This handmade palette from Myrtle Cottage Studio on Etsy is perfect for travelling because it's so tiny and it also comes in that little pouch that you saw earlier on. I decided to pack just four brushes this time. First up we have a 3-0 tiny detail brush and then this larger flat brush. They're both Pro Art Pro Lean brushes, which is a brand I use a lot. This one's a 4-0, so that's even smaller. I love my detail brushes. And this one is a Betty Hayways number no. seven. This is a good all-rounder brush and it's the one I'm using most often has a really good point and also manages to hold a lot of water at the same time. Both the ruler and the scissors were already here as I'd left them here last time but they would be an essential part of my travel kit because I use them all the time for measuring and trimming sheets of paper. I decided to pack two palettes. Uh, this one is my main palette. It contains 39 different colors of watercolor paint and um, it has a lot of mixing space too, which is very useful. Um, yeah, I decided to bring this one because it gives me the widest possible choice of colors. I also decided to bring my night palette because it seemed like a really useful addition alongside the main palette due to the fact that it seemed to have a lot of colours that weren't included in the main palette and it also had the metallics which I really wanted to work with and um, I'm really glad I brought this one because they actually work really well together and I feel like I've got the widest possible range of different colours and different moods and themes and so on. This is something I bought quite recently. This is my little collapsible Faber-Castell water pot. So this is really good for traveling. It's made out of a kind of rubberized plastic is the only way I can describe it. And it collapses down so it's really easy to pack. And yeah, I'm finding this really useful. I decided to bring just one basic graphite pencil with me. It's just an HB just to sketch out the watercolor paintings. This is one of my current favorite sketchbooks. It's the Etcher Everyday Sketchbook, 
with cold pressed, slightly textured watercolour paper, as you can see here. I also decided to bring a pack of Fabriano paper. These are paper samples from a recent order I placed with A Gallo watercolours. That video will be coming up when I'm back in Surrey, by the way. Yeah, they were great little travel sheets of paper, so that's why I've included those. And I brought the De La Rowney heavyweight paper. This is for my pencil drawings, so that just seemed the most easy and convenient way of bringing some paper for those. Um, it's a really nice thick paper. And I'm keeping all of the paper in one of these card folders. These are really good when you're traveling. They do up with elastic to keep everything inside very secure. And I have a few little sheets of paper there, watercolor paper that I've pre-cut. And this um, sketchbook from the Tate, <laughs> I've had this for absolutely ages. I'm down to the last few sheets of paper now. This is just a really good basic um, cold press watercolor paper. These two books I haven't travelled with, they were actually here in Suffolk. I'd left them here, I used to live here, so um, a lot of my books are still in my old bedroom in Suffolk, but I'm probably going to be taking these back to Surrey with me. So please let me know if you'd like a video where I show you a little bit more of both of these books. I'm using them a lot at the moment while I'm here to inspire me. And finally, I thought I'd share some of the small paintings I've been working on while I've been here. This little one is finished. A couple of these are finished. This one is finished too. Um, and as you can see, I'm using my new colour palette of pinks and lilacs and greys and blues. Really into that colour palette at the moment. And just experimenting with a few different techniques and ideas and the one I will show you in a moment isn't quite finished yet that's still in progress this one coming up here so I've still got something to do to the hill on the left hand side um, but other than that it's pretty finished it's gonna be quite a simple one um, but yeah I want to add more detail um, onto the hill there so there you can see some of my new watercolor pieces and I haven't had much time to work because we've been out and about most days but I've grabbed a few hours here and there just to play around and I'm so glad that I was able to bring my art materials and and just be able to create some work while I'm here. So I hope you found that interesting or useful to see um, what I decided to bring with me this time. Obviously my travel art supplies would vary with each trip depending on how long the trip was or what else I had planned but anyway thank you all for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video.